Yes, we are recording now. Okay, good deal. My name is David Blewett. I'm city councilman for District 14, which includes downtown, uptown, and East Dallas, um, which includes the project that we're going to discuss tonight in the McKinney Coal area. This is a project that's been in the works for a number of years. It's gone through uh, fits and st stops and starts, and uh, we're to a point where we're, we're having a uh, public meeting tonight to present it and get feedback. It will be presented by city staff. I'm here to observe and to make sure that, that the information is presented in a way that uh, we all understand it and make sure that I understand the feedback from all the constituents and stakeholders that are uh, participating tonight. I mentioned before we start recording, I see a few friendly faces out there. I can't see all of you, but I'm glad that we have significant participation because this is a very important project. It's an important project, especially with what's going on in COVID. It's important for economic development in addition to public works and transportation. So this is a project very important to me. Um, I'm excited it's moving forward, and I'm excited to see how the presentation goes tonight and get feedback from all of you. So having said that, I will... Uh, defer to Chris Turner uh, nowhere and I don't know if Majid Al Ghaffri is going to talk at all who is the city manager over public works but I see he's on the call so I will defer to city staff city manager and assistant director of public works thank you thank you council member Lewitt Shamine if you could please bring up the presentation We will go through and do introductions of city staff, but again, as council member Blewett mentioned, my name is Chris Turner Notware. I am the city engineer for the city of Dallas. And I work within the Department of Public Works. Um, he mentioned assistant city manager, Majid Al Gaffrey is on the line. Majid, would you like to say any words before we get going tonight? Good evening, everyone. Um, not really uh, other than uh, thanking all of the folks who uh, are joining this meeting. This is a very, uh, very important project for the city of Dallas, and we're very excited. Uh, there is uh, uh, financial uh, commitments from uh, Uptown, from COG, from the city, and, and this is a great project uh, for all, and we're excited to have this project uh, start. Thank you, sir. At this time, I'll have city staff go through and introduce themselves, and I will start with the Public Works Department. And as you're joining the meeting, if you could please mute your microphones, or that would be very helpful for us, please. Robert, would you like to start? Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Robert Pettis. I'm the Director of Public Works. Shamin? Sorry, I have to take out the slides. Uh, this is Shamin Kongibo, and I'm the senior program manager with the City of Dallas and Public Works. This is Cameron Anderson. Yeah, go ahead, Cameron. Sorry. I'm the engineer and project manager for uh, the McKinney Cole two-way conversion project with the Department of Public Works. Good evening, everyone. You probably heard me talk first. This is Ryan Wagner, the PR coordinator for the Department of Public Works. Will the Transportation Department staff please go through and introduce themselves? Yeah, this is Gus Concarly. I'm the Interim Director of the Department of Transportation. This is uh, Sri Viramalu, Senior Program Manager of Traffic Signals. Thank you. Kimberly Smith, the Senior Transportation Planner over the Thoroughfare Plan. <laughs> is there any other city staff that we have missed? Okay. With that, we will go ahead and start our presentation tonight. I am going to go ahead and turn my camera off so that I do not have any bandwidth issues because I do not want to lose you guys in the middle of this presentation. So that's why you're going to see me disappear here. But I do want to let all of you know that we are basically recording um, this meeting. It's for purposes of having the meeting for future reference. And instead of a sign in sheet, we're recording everyone's name that we can see for the official meeting record. For those of you that have only called in, we can only see a phone number for you. So at this point, I would ask 
that you state your name for the record. If you have only called in, unmute yourself, state your name for the record, and the last four digits of your phone number. And if you have only called in, you can unmute yourself by doing star six. And we'll we'll go ahead and go straight down the list. So starting with seven four five zero as the last four digits. If you would go ahead and unmute yourself and let us know who you are. All right, we'll go ahead and move on to the next on the list. I see a two five eight five. That's Deborah Ryan with Uptown Dallas Inc. All right, thank you, Deborah. Uh, we have 5178. Uh, five, one, last four digits, 5178. If you could identify yourself. Okay, we'll move on to the next. Uh, we have a 0196. Yeah, I'm Jim Grau. I live in the district and I'm Chancellor for the Church of the Incarnation. I hope to join you by video here in a minute. I'm driving back from a meeting. All right, thank you, Jim. Uh, on next I on list. Mention, sorry, I just want to mention, this is Majid. I just want to mention that uh, Susan uh, Clemens from uh, TechStock joined us as well. Got you. Uh, we have, a, I see a 5414. Sandra Borg, um, I live uptown and i've been following this issue for a long time thank you sandra uh we have a five two two zero this is max pearl i'm with uptown dallas inc thank you max uh we got a five four four five yes this is christopher robinson and i live in uptown thank you sir uh, 7332. My name is Newt Walker, and I have officed in Uptown for 30 years and have been working and following this project with Judd Hankey. Thank you for that. Uh, we have a 3341 as our last number. Yes, uh, this is Phil Cobb. I am a co founder and chairman of the board of the McKinney Avenue Trolley. Thank you, Phil. And with that, it looks like we've got all our numbers here uh, for the ones that have responded. OK, wonderful. Thank you. If we could go to the next slide, Shamin. OK, so please submit all of your questions and comments via the chat box. Questions will be reviewed by our team and a response will be prepared at the end of the presentation. If a more detailed response is required, a response will be posted to the project website within 30 days of receipt. And at the end, we'll show you where that project website is. And as Ryan mentioned, as we're going through, we can also have folks that only called in at the end. We will have you also be able to unmute yourself and ask questions. But our preferred way is to have them in the chat box, if you will. That way we can help prepare answers as we're going through this. And again, if you've called into the meeting and wish to submit questions or comments, you can email the project team at mckinneycoleconversion at gmail.com. And if you'd like to be added to the project's emailing list, you can also send a message to this email as well. The project also has a survey that we're going to be doing, and I'll post that link at the end of the presentation. And you may also provide comments on the survey as well. So our agenda for the meeting tonight, we're gonna to talk about the project location, which is going to, or excuse me, project information, which is going to include the location, the background, the overview, the proposed scope for the project. We'll talk a little bit about potential future MATA extension, the purpose of the project, and some accident data. We're going to discuss existing versus proposed operations. We'll talk about the proposed improvements. We'll talk about how you can provide your input, um, the next steps in the project, and then contact information for the project. So the project itself, as you can see on this graphic, is located on McKinney Avenue and Cole Avenue and Carlisle Street between Allen Street and Harvard Avenue. And it's on Harvard between McKinney and Cole, 
and on Allen between Carlisle and McKinney. So basically it makes a loop with the east side of the loop being McKinney, the west side of the loop being Cole and Carlisle, the north part being Harvard, and the south being Allen. So looking at some of the background of the project, this project has been ongoing for quite some time. So we had a thoroughfare plan amendment application that was submitted May 5th of 2016. The Dallas City Council approved that thoroughfare plan amendment November 18th of 2016. The McKinney Avenue and Cole Avenue two-way conversion was included in the 2017 bond program. We have support from the Regional Transportation Council and North Central Texas Council of Governments. They approved federal funding for the project on October 12th of 2017. We have an agreement between the City of Dallas and Uptown Dallas Inc., one of our partners, and that was executed September 12th of 2018. And we also have an agreement between the City of Dallas and the Texas Department of Transportation, which was also executed September 28th of 2020. So looking at the overview for the project, the project is in Council District 14, as you just heard from Council Member Blewett. The estimated project cost is $21.1 million. As I mentioned, it is a partnership project between the City of Dallas, Uptown Dallas Inc., who we refer to as UDI, the McKinney Avenue Transit Authority, who's referred to as MATA, Texas Department of Transportation, or TxDOT, the Regional Transportation Council and North Central Texas Council of Governments, which we call NCT COG, and the funding for the project itself, the City of Dallas has $7.3 million in our 2017 bond program. UDI is contributing a million dollars. TxDOT is contributing a million dollars. And then we have federal funding in the project via TxDOT and the RTC of $11.8 million. So looking at the proposed scope of the project, we're going to convert the following roads from one-way operation to two-way operation. From McKinney Avenue, from Allen to Harvard, that's the east side of the loop that I mentioned. From Harvard Avenue to McKinney and Cole, that's the north part of the loop. From Cole between Harvard and Carlisle, that's part of the west side of the loop. Between Carlisle from Cole to Allen Street. And then Allen Street between Carlisle and McKinney, that's that south part of the loop. And it's approximately four and a half miles of roadways that we'll be doing improvements on. So what we'll be doing is we'll replace, be replacing existing signs, markings, and traffic signals for two-way operation. We'll be doing pedestrian improvements, which will include sidewalks, ADA ramps, lighting, refuge islands at major intersections, enhanced painted crosswalks, and new flashing beacons at select mid-block crossing crosswalks. We'll also be doing traffic calming, which can include um, curb extensions with parking at select locations. As part of this project, we're also doing a traffic operational analysis, and this is being done to analyze the impacts of the two-way conversion to the traffic operation and recommend proper lane usage and signal timing for the project. So looking at the project as well, we only are working on doing trolley relocation at the following locations on Cole Avenue between Blackburn and Lemon and on Blackburn Street from Allen. Let me try that again on Allen Street between Cole and McKinney and then on Blackburn Street and we'll talk a little bit more about Blackburn Street as we get to the end of the presentation. And we're only doing street reconstruction at the following relocations on Cole Avenue between Blackburn and Lemon on Blackburn between McKinney and Cole, we'll be doing partial lane reconstruction due to the trolley relocation. As I mentioned, we'll be discussing that a little bit later. On Allen Street between Carlisle and McKinney, and at select locations for those curb extensions, median refuge islands, ADA ramps and sidewalks. So basically all the construction will be within the existing curb lines, except in the noted above areas. So there is a potential future MATA extension that is being discussed. The NCT COG is conducting an extension feasibility study right now. And our proposed concepts that we have in this project do not preclude any potential MATA streetcar extension. The streetcar is going to use shared travel lanes with vehicles in order to accommodate the vehicular travel flow and it will impact some parking in the project. 
But I do want to note the potential MATA extension is not part of the two-way conversion, but our work is certainly not going to preclude any potential future extensions of MATA. So the purpose of the project basically is first of all to calm traffic and slow traffic down. It's to improve walkability. It's to improve safety for all modes of transportation. And we're converting one way to two way traffic operations. And one of the goals is to basically reduce the use of McKinney Cole as a thoroughfare and make it more as a neighborhood street. So we're also creating a framework for the future pocket parks and green spaces that will be developed by UDI. We're looking to have no adverse impact to the McKinney trolley operation and minimize the disruption to businesses during construction. So looking at the project area and some accident data, between January of 2013 and May of 2016, there were 466 accidents in the area. And most notably, there were two fatalities, one at McKinney and Elizabeth and one at Carlisle and Hall. So if you go to the next page, you can see that some of these crash types, we have some with trolley, we have some with fixed objects and things of that nature. But again, the main takeaway from this is we had 466 total accidents and we did have two fatalities. Looking at some more current accident data between January 2017 and December of 2019, we had 449 accidents within the corridor. We do have some high accident locations at intersections. But one thing that we can note on here is that we have changed how we record our accident data and now we can also record pedestrian accidents. So this is something that we're looking at between 2017 and 2019 in the quarter, we had 18 pedestrian accidents. So we're looking really for this project to improve safety for all modes of transportation, but in particular for the pedestrians to improve that safety for pedestrian crossings, to lower the speed of traffic, and to really convert this back to more of a neighborhood street and neighborhood feel. So the existing operations, basically McKinney northbound has three lanes and that's that east side of the loop, the right side of our screen here. The Cole and Carlisle Street have three lanes southbound, that's the west side of that loop. Allen Street has three lanes eastbound, that's the bottom part of the loop. And Harvard Avenue up top has two lanes westbound, that's what's currently existing right now out there. So looking at our proposed operations, what we're going to be doing is on McKinney Avenue, we'll be providing two northbound lanes and one southbound lane. On Cole and Carlisle, we'll be providing two southbound lanes and one northbound. On Allen Street at the bottom, we'll have two eastbound lanes and one westbound. And then on Harvard Avenue at the top, we'll have one eastbound lane and one westbound lane. So the next series of slides that I'm going to show you are a series of typical roadway sections and lane configurations for the project. I'm going to start at that southeast corner of that loop that I keep talking about and we'll continue north up McKinney, then around Harvard, south down Cole, and then discuss Allen and end up back at the southeast corner of the project. We don't have sections in here for the entire corridor but all our conceptual drawings will be posted on the project website after the meeting. So if we look at starting on the southeast corner of McKinney Avenue, looking north from Hall to Lemon, the existing operation, we have three northbound lanes and the curb lane is currently shared with the trolley or streetcar. You'll notice I, I, I will likely call it on um, the trolley through most of the, of the presentation. And if we look at the proposed operations, what we're looking at is two northbound lanes and one southbound lane. That northbound curb lane will be a shared lane with the trolley. So looking at our next section on McKinney, it's between Noble and Fitzhugh. And that existing operation, again, we have three northbound travel lanes. And the proposed section will have one southbound lane and two lanes northbound. The outside northbound curb lane is going to be utilized as a driving lane during peak hours, and it can be utilized for off-peak parking. 
So we basically call this a flexible lane, and you'll see that in a couple of the different cross sections. So we wanted to explain kind of what that is and what that means. So we're now at the top of the loop on Harvard, and on Harvard, the existing section right now has two westbound driving lanes with parking on both sides of the roadway. What we're looking at for the proposed operation is one travel lane in each direction and still have parking on both sides of the roadway. And if we start down the other side of the loop, starting from Cole from Knox to Monticello, we currently have three southbound travel lanes. Our proposed section will have one northbound lane and two southbound lanes. And that southbound curb lane is another flexible use lane that's used for vehicular travel during peak hours and can be used for parking during off peak hours. And the next section shows a section from Cole from Elizabeth to Haskell. Now this is looking south, whereas all of our other sections have been looking north. And this shows how the new lane configuration fits within the existing conditions, and it shows you a little bit about how it fits so you can see the actual conditions that are out there with trees and all of those things. So this is an actual street view of the roadway with this overlaid. So again, we'll have two southbound travel lanes, one northbound travel lane, and on-street parking in this area. So continuing, looking on coal, between Blackburn and Lemon. The existing roadway has three southbound lanes with one lane being shared with the trolley and we do have a parking lane on one side. And our proposed conditions will shift the trolley to the west side of the roadway and it's gonna provide one northbound lane, two southbound travel lanes and one of which will be shared with the trolley and we do have a parking lane as well. And our next slide shows another view of the proposed conditions on coal from Blackburn to Lemon. And again, it shows how the new section looks within the existing conditions. This is looking south, so we have one northbound travel lane, two southbound travel lanes, one of which is shared with the trolley, and we have on-street parking. And if we look at Carlisle, we're on the bottom of the loop now between Lemon and Hall. The existing roadway has three southbound lanes and on-street parking. And our proposed section will have one northbound lane, two southbound lanes and on-street parking. In Allen Street, again, which is the bottom of our, of our loop, we're looking east here and the existing section has two driving lanes and parking on the south side of the roadway. And our proposed operation will have two eastbound travel lanes and one westbound travel lane and on-street parking. And on Allen Street between Cole and McKinney, we currently have three travel lanes and the middle lane is shared with the trolley. And we also have on-street parking. And for the proposed section, we'll have one lane going westbound and we have two eastbound lanes and the outside lane will be shared with the trolley and we do have parking as well. So finally, to complete the loop, this is a view of improvements on McKinney between Allen and Sneed. And again, it shows how the proposed improvements will fit with existing conditions. So again, we're looking south here and this will have two northbound travel lanes. The outside lane will be shared with the trolley and we also have one southbound lane and a planned school drop off area for Travis Academy. So we will post the full conceptual drawings on our website, but that was just an example of a lot of the sections that we have throughout the project. So our overall proposed improvements for the corridor include better aligning the intersections for motor vehicles, the trolley where applicable and pedestrians, we want to shorten pedestrian crossing distance so it minimizes the time that that pedestrian is in the roadway. We want to improve pedestrian crossings with painted crosswalks and pedestrian push buttons. We're going to create indented parking on McKinney Avenue and on Allen Street. 
and create spaces for future pocket parks and plazas to be developed by UDI. Now the McCall McKinney Allen intersection is being improved to better align the intersection, which will improve the safety. We're improving the pedestrian crossing by creating curb extensions and ADA ramps, and you can see those in that pink there. We're also creating a left turn lane from McKinney to Allen Street. And this will also create a potential pocket plaza for gathering. And this intersection is included within the project survey for input regarding the pocket plaza and potential amenities that the public might like to see within that plaza. So please pay attention to this one when you're filling out your project survey. Specific proposed improvements that we have within the project are rectangular rapid flashing beacons or RRFBs. And these are directional high intensity lights that are visible at all hours and they're typically used at mid block crossings. They basically get um, drivers attention when a pedestrian is getting ready to cross the roadway. We also have pedestrian lighting, which will improve visibility for vehicles and pedestrians. And we have this specifically at Cole Park and the trolley stops. And our next slide specifically shows the Cole Park area as this is one location that's being proposed for a mid block crossing with an RRFB. So you can kind of see that in the middle of the drawing there, how we have the crossing with the flashers. And then we also have potential pedestrian lighting in this area as well. So our next proposed improvement that we'll be including are bulb outs. And this widens the sidewalk for a short distance. It reduces the crossing distance and the time that a pedestrian must spend within the roadway while crossing. And it also allows drivers and pedestrians to see each other when parked vehicles would otherwise block visibility. We're also including ADA ramps, and these are inclined planes which facilitate the access of sidewalks for wheelchairs and other mobility devices, as well as strollers, carts, or heavy luggage. And we'll be adding these in locations where there are currently missing ADA ramps. We'll be adding them at bulb outs and mid block crossings. As you can see in this display for the McKinney Harvard and Cole Harvard intersection, we're proposing curb extensions and ADA ramps as shown in pink. We do have an existing circular flashing beacon at the Katy Trail crossing in this location. And on the next slide, we have a picture of the existing circular flashing beacon. This intersection is a part of the project survey as well, and we'd like some input regarding this existing crossing at Katy Trail. So if you feel the crossing is sufficient or if it needs some improvements, so please pay attention to that in the survey. Proposed improvements also include median refuge islands, which essentially create two stage crossings for pedestrians. So it makes it easier and safer for them to cross multiple lanes of traffic because basically they can stop in the middle of the roadway in that refuge island. And these will potentially be placed at major intersections such as Blackburn and Fitzhugh. And as you can see in the graphic, the intersection at Fitzhugh, the potential median refuge is shown here with ADA ramps shown in pink. So we have three preliminary trolley relocation options on Blackburn Street from McKinney to Cole that we'd like to discuss. The first option has no change. The second and third options relocate the trolley to different locations within the roadway and provide an extended parkway area, which I'll show you in the next series of slides. This intersection is also part of the project survey to obtain your input on the preferred option. However, I do want to note that engineering judgment will ultimately determine the configuration of the roadway. So if we go and we look at the first option, this is to have no change essentially. So this is what currently exists on Blackburn. Um, the trolley is on the south side of the roadway in a protected lane along the south curb line. And we have two eastbound and two westbound travel lanes with dedicated left turn lanes. So this next slide just shows the cross section view of that existing condition and it shows a little more clearly how the trolley is in a protected lane in the south curb and how we have the two southbound and two northbound, excuse me, two eastbound and two westbound lanes with left turn lanes and parking. 
And option two basically would relocate the trolley from the south curb line to the westbound left turn lane. This creates a shared trolley vehicle turn lane and it provides a potential parking pocket plaza on the south side of the roadway. We still have two travel lanes in each direction and a dedicated eastbound left turn lane. The westbound left turn lane would be shared with the trolley and the vehicle. So our next slide shows that in the cross section view and it does show the two travel lanes in each direction. Our dedicated eastbound left turn lane. And the shared westbound left turn lane for the trolley and the vehicle. And parking does remain. On the roadway. And then option three relocates the trolley to the eastbound left turn lane. It creates a dedicated trolley lane. We have one eastbound travel lane and a shared eastbound through left turn lane. Two travel lanes will remain in the westbound direction with a dedicated left turn lane. And this does also provide the potential parking and pocket plaza on the south side of the roadway. So again, looking at the cross section view, we have the two eastbound lanes, um, one of which is a shared left turn lane. We have the dedicated turn lane for the trolley and the two westbound lanes with the dedicated turn lane as well. So again, please provide your input on these options on the project survey. So you've been hearing about this project survey. So how do you get involved and how do you provide your input? This is the location of the project website. You can see here www.dallascitynews.net McKinney Cold Two-Way Conversion Meeting 2020. You can see there are QR codes here on the screen. The left QR code is for the survey that is in English and the right QR code is for the survey that is in Spanish. You can actually hold your phone up to your computer screen right now and it should recognize that QR code and take you straight to the survey. We will post this presentation on the website afterwards, so the QR codes will also be available. Our deadline to provide input is January 5th, 2021, essentially 10 working days, so we're asking for your input on the survey by January 5th, 2021. So our next steps in our project will be to collect community feedback from this meeting. We'll complete the operational analysis that I mentioned so that we can look at the timing of the intersections and those type of things. We'll identify the preferred improvement options. We'll bring it back to the community to talk with you about it. Now our proposed schedule for this project, this project is a design build project. And what that means is we hire the designer and the contractor at the same time so that they're working together as, as one team. So essentially we put out our request for qualifications and our proposals in February and April of 2021. We anticipate awarding the contract in August of 2021. Anticipate the design actually starting in October of 2021. And we anticipate the construction portion starting in May of 2022. And completion of the project in December of 2023. So contact information, our public outreach consultant is Katrina Keys, and you can reach her at the McKinney Coal Conversion at gmail.com. And as I mentioned earlier, if you'd like to be on the project's mailing list, please send an email to that McKinney Coal Conversion at gmail.com email. Our project manager is Cameron Anderson. The senior program manager is Shemin Cornsville. And I am Chris Turner Noteware. I am the city engineer. And here is our project website where all of our information on the project will be posted, including this presentation, the recording of tonight's meeting, and any additional information as we go through the project, such as the conceptual plans and additional things as we move forward. And with that, that is the end of my formal presentation. So as I mentioned, if you have questions, if you can please start putting those in the chat. That would be a great help for us. And now that we're, uh, that we're uh, opening, uh, opening up, up here, here. 
Uh, I'll go uh, ahead I'll go and go down the list for those folks who do have their. I see we have some hands raised that would like to ask questions. So I see a Ramsey March. Uh, if you would go ahead and unmute yourself and lower your hand, and you can go ahead and make your comments or ask your questions. Sure, thank you. And I have to be brief uh, because I do have to go soon, but I wanted to identify myself as representative for. Um, the group that owns the Quadrangle Project in Uptown. I work for Stream Realty Partners. Um, I've been an observer and a participant in this market as a real estate uh, developer for about a decade. And I wanted to uh, voice my support for the project. I uh, believe it's long overdue from the neighborhood, particularly as it relates to enhancing uh, both pedestrian and vehicular safety on McKinney and Cole. Uh, quite frankly, when I moved to Dallas, a little over 10 years ago, it was um, always uh, confusing to me that um, these streets were one way uh, to begin with and sort of created a track in Uptown as opposed to supporting um, two way sort of pedestrian friendly traffic similar to what I experienced in New York. So I, I applaud all those involved in creating um, a, a project here that really uh, makes uh, these thoroughfares into uh, into roads that really support local retail and uh, the local market. So, um, and then I just wanted to emphasize another point in terms of the pocket, uh, the potential for green space and pocket parks. You know, one thing that jumps out at you when you experience McKinney Avenue and Cole both is that there aren't a lot of places for pedestrians to sort of have a respite from, um, from vehicles that are coming and going and uh, stopping points where you can really, um, reflect on uptown and, and appreciate the environment you're in so i i that's something that's that's in the fabric of all great urban um uh, communities such as new york and chicago and san francisco and other uh, other great cities that we aspire to be um, to become in some respects in terms of the good things they do with urban, urban planning so uh, less a question and more of a statement i just wanted to voice my support um, and again I, I commend all the um, all the folks that have put this plan forward and, and hope that it can be supported and embraced by the community. Thank you for your comments there. Uh, I see next we have uh, Shelly Potter. Good evening, everyone, and uh, hello, Chris. Um, Hi, I, live, I live at uh, Colin Armstrong, and I certainly have been following this project from the beginning and I'm our driveway uh, directly comes out onto coal, so I'm very interested in what's happening. And I think a number of us I talked to Patrick before were concerned about the the knock section, and I may have missed it tonight, but I didn't see that addressed in the presentation. Tonight. I'm happy to go online and look, but I think I'd like to know more about what is the plan. We've got so much construction now that there's a lot going on in our neighborhood, and it's uh, mostly residential from Armstrong South to fit you. Shameen, do you want to take that one? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, as one of the slide mentioned, majority of this project is going to be signed, marking, and also replace a existing, uh, existing traffic signal to accommodate a two-way conversion. That will happen mostly north of Blackburn. So the area what you mentioned about the Knox Street, it will be uh, basically the uh, McKinney and Cole will be crossing the Knox Street. So in those two locations, anywhere north of uh, Blackburn will be just a sign and marking. So it will not have any of the impact to your driveway. We will do just a sign and marking, but the traffic signal at the Knox Street will be replaced. So let me also bring up, it was my understanding as part of the uh, agreement with the Alliance group that's building the apartments at Cole and McKinney that we're supposed to have some improvements at Armstrong because they're now going to be dumping out all of their folks onto Armstrong. Uh, can I get, talk to someone offline about, uh, you know, where we stand on that original agreement that was promised to the neighbors? Back. Yes, we can talk offline because we do have a conversation with the uh, designer of the developer. And so a new signal, actually, there will be a new signal at Armstrong and Cole, as well as a new one at Armstrong and McKinney. Thank so you. there will be some arrangement with the developer. We can talk offline. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. 
You're welcome. All right, I see next on the list we have uh, uh, Kevin. If you would go ahead and unmute yourself and make your comments or ask your questions. I, is it Kevin Buckus? I'm, I'm assuming. Yes. OK, yeah. great. Sorry, I, I, not sure. OK, great. Yeah, mine was uh, more of a comment as well. I wanted to voice my support for the project as someone who works in Uptown and is frequently traveling Cole and McKinney and someone who frequently visits Cole Park as well. I'm very much looking forward to having that two way conversion for the safety aspect, not only for vehicles, but also for pedestrians. Um, I can't tell you how many times I'm driving to or from work and there's people blowing by on either Cole and McKinney. Um, you know, just last night I actually was playing tennis at Cole Park. And, you know, some, when I was trying to get out of, uh, of Cole, I had to wait a little bit just because I was looking at my rear view mirror. And I have reached Debbie Ryan. Thank you. Flying by. So just wanted to voice my support. I think it's uh, long overdue. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. If you're not speaking right now, can you please mute your phone? Thank you. Uh, I see next on the list we have Linda and Stan Barton. You go ahead and unmute and make your comments or ask your questions. Thank you. Um, we live in the Latour condominium just north of Allen and McKinney. And as I understand it, the, uh, this project is going to slow the traffic uh, northbound. And I think the natural result of that is going to be that people that want to get to the freeway or get to Hall Street are going to take a shortcut through Oak Grove. And Oak Grove is uh, one of our main accesses, the access to our garage and deliveries, and it's problematic already because uh, there people are not supposed to park in certain areas, but nobody enforces it. Everybody parks everywhere. And it, if you add a flow of traffic of people trying to make, uh, trying to get to the, uh, uh, you know, going down Oak Grove, it's going to be very difficult for us to come in and out of our, our, our building so uh, I thought maybe the solution, obviously it appears that this project's going to happen, but maybe there should be a sign up on McKinney at the intersection that says that Oak Grove is only for deliveries and residents or something like that to try to deter people from coming through, uh, taking a shortcut through Oak Grove. Can I, uh, can I weigh in here, sir? Um, my name is David Blewett and, and I'll tell you, I am, I'm not sure this is um, something they can help you with right uh, right away, but I can. So if you could email my office, I'd really appreciate it. Um, it's david.blewett at dallascityhall.com. And um, I'd like to um, take a look at it. I have Gus is on the call. Maybe we can have transportation to take a look at it. But once I know more specifically about what you're talking about, I can see if I have any options. Because this um, the McKinney two-way is going to take a long time. It sounds like you have something more pressing. Can you help me out with that? OK. Did you have something? Yes, I'm concerned about the turn into the driveway uh, across these two lanes of traffic. <clears throat> because right now you can only turn into the driveway on Latour from, from the right hand lane to cut across two lanes of traffic to make a left turn lane on that curb was going to be awfully dangerous. If, uh... If somehow or other I could contact you, if you don't have my contact, maybe we can continue this conversation tomorrow and hopefully I can help you um, in a more um, a more efficient manner than tonight's McKinney two-way. Is that something we can do? Okay. I know we have your contact Thank you. I did place Council Member Blewett's email address in the chat. Um, the second one that says dot com, not the first one that has a comma, but the second one, but his email is in the chat. But we also have their contact information too, correct? If they don't contact me. Yes, sir, we do. Okay, thank you. Uh, next on the list, I see we have, uh, it's either Kellum or a Kaleem Butts. If you would go ahead and unmute David yourself and uh, make your comments. David Dot Blue, is that yep. it? Yep, it's, uh, it's Kellum, thank you. Um, so I, I'm, I've been a resident of uh, Uptown
We can't hear Callum. Callum, we lost you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, sorry. Um, I, it's, uh, I was saying it's, it's Kellum, uh, and I, I too am, uh, I've been a resident of uh, Uptown for almost 20 years. Uh, I also live in, uh, live in Latour. Um, I'm a, uh, I've been a strong supporter of this project since I've heard about it. Um, I, you know, I, I, I like the fact that it is going to make Uptown more walkable. Uh, I firmly believe that that great cities have to have lots of walkability and, and Uptown is one of our more walkable areas. So I think that this um, this project will really go a long way towards that. I think it, it, it addresses a, a lot of uh, pedestrian safety issues. Um, we, uh, we, you know, we take advantage of all that Uptown has to offer. So we walk around quite a bit. Uh, we walk our dog. Um, and we have, you know, uh, a lot of lot of traffic and and, and I and I, I really do feel that that um, this this effort will will address a lot of that. So I, I very much look forward to uh, to moving forward with it. So thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, next on the list we have uh, Jim Grau. If you would go ahead and unmute yourself and make your comments or ask your questions. Yeah, thank you. I was on the phone earlier when I introduced myself. Ah, um, yes. I live in the neighborhood. I live in the district, and I'm also uh, the chancellor at Church of the Incarnation. So, so one of the questions slash concerns that I have is, and maybe it was addressed. I couldn't see, and I got halfway home, and then I was able to get on. Is how, how do you handle the the street parking around our church and in, and around Cole Park? Our church is dependent upon it, frankly, um, and so uh, how how is that? How will that be addressed, or is that going to be addressed? Shamin, you want to go ahead? Uh, yes. Okay. So this is Shamin Pongibol, and I'm the senior program manager with the Public Works. So we did uh, specifically discuss about the parking along the church. So uh, we have get with the transportation because uh, you probably missed the configuration, but you can go into uh, the website, you can see the conceptual plan. So the section along the church, it will become two northbound, one southbound. So think about it, the current parking and basically the people are currently is the three northbound lane. So people can park on the both side of the curb. However, when we change it to the two northbound and one southbound, so the southbound lane by the coal park will not have any parking allowed because it's only one through lane. You cannot park there, otherwise it's gonna be blocking the through traffic, right? So what we do is we did get the permission from the transportation department. So two northbound lane, the outside one by the church will become a flexible lane, meaning that you can park off peak. That means any time except the peak hour, morning rush hour, in the afternoon rush hour, also the weekend, you can park along the church. So that will be the arrangement. Okay, so weekends you can, I'm sure that the details of any special events, funerals, that kind of stuff, I guess we can work that out, right? Got it. Okay, that helps. Thank you. I think that will work for the church. Thank you. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Up next on the list, we have uh, Robert Bagwell. If you go ahead and unmute and make your comments or ask your questions. Yeah, my name and can you hear me? Yes, there we go. Yes, good. Um, and um, I've been in the real estate, commercial real estate business for since 1970. I'm almost embarrassed to say that it's been since a long time. Um, and um, I'm one of the original developers of West Village. Um, and uh, my uh, company, Urban Partners, manages West Village uh, and has since its opening. Uh, we started working on the project in 1995 and um, opened in 2001 and um, um, I think the biggest problem we've had you know at West Village is has been these two-way uh, these one-way streets uh, 
um, McKinney Avenue, is, is, as you all know, is kind of a speed bowl, uh, um, drag strip um, uh, many times of the day. Um, and so uh, I laud everybody's efforts to, you know, to get this two-way conversion built. Uh, I know it's taken a lot of work, and I really appreciate everybody's hard work. Um, uh, I do think that based on my observation of two-way conversions in other cities and also two-way conversions in Dallas, that, that, that the completion of this project will definitely enhance the neighborhood, uh, you know, from uh, beginning to end, that entire two and a half miles or so. Uh, um, we, um, uh, you know, retail is definitely enhanced when the traffic is slowed down and when the, the circulation is better. Uh, uh, we've been plagued with three one-way streets, you know, since since day one, and um, this conversion will improve our circulation tremendously, and it gives people other options by being able to come up coal uh, as a access and uh, for egress and, and uh, exiting. Uh, one of my, my main concern um, is the um, the way the trolley transitions from McKinney and Blackburn over along Blackburn to Cole Street. Uh, and I've, I've studied the, the various options. Uh, uh, I'm really here to speak against option one. Uh, it, um, you know, our main exit is just about 100 feet south of Blackburn uh, and the by Village Burger Bar, and in a typical year, we will park uh, one million cars at West Village. Uh, we have traffic uh, 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 a system where we count the cars that come and go. Uh, and I'm I'm really concerned that with the with the alignment of option number one, that the trolley will require that northbound northbound coal traffic to have to stop at around our main exit um, or further. It's just, it feels like that it, it'll have to come off almost at a diagonal for the first 80 to 100 feet along coal. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, we experienced a little bit of a, a similar situation today where, where, where the trolley goes north on McKinney and then takes the left-hand turn on along the path the alignment of option one. Um, and that's a very awkward arrangement. So with the trolley going north in either option two or three, it, uh, uh, it alleviates the, the trolley having to cross traffic on McKinney, uh, and then it'll be light assisted. Uh, and um, and then as, as it comes to coal, uh, I think the, the best alignment would be option two um but option three is certainly better than option one and so i'm, I'm sure we can let all the, the, the people that are smarter than i am figure, figure out what, what's the best thing to do uh, but i wanted to um, um just give you my observations of having been here every day for the last 20 years uh, uh how uh how uh, um the issue that I think would, that would be caused with option number one. So thank you. Hey, Chris. Yes, sir. Um, explain to me a little bit more about the kind of feedback you're looking tonight. Cause I know you've got this survey and I think there's quite a few people on this call. Can you tell me exactly what you're looking for from all of us tonight? We are basically looking for, if you have questions that you need us to answer to please get those out. If you'd like to speak in support, let us know. If you have issues, let us know that as well. I'm open to all comments, sir. Um, and really, the difference in the, in, the, in the survey that you've got. The, the survey will basically memorialize anyone's comments. Um, that data will be taken and um, analyzed. So the data on the survey will be the official data from the meeting. We'll have this recording but it's always better for folks to actually submit a survey so that their um, information is recorded. Okay. In written form. Thank you. Um, I, the reason I ask is I actually, um, I'm kind of running late on a different meeting. So I, I stuck so. around and I, 
appreciate the presentation. I've had this presentation before. I've met with a number of you that are on this call about this presentation. I see Patrick Kennedy and I see Joseph Pitchford and some other people. So um, I know we've talked about this before. So I'm really glad we're doing this. I think it's important. It's important to hear certain things. I hadn't heard about the Church of Incarnation. That was important to me. Um, I, I have thought quite a bit about the trolley where it turns around also in option one, two, or three, and I have an opinion, but I'm waiting to see what everybody else says. Um, I can tell you that I like the idea of more plazas, more park, more, more um, green space, more pedestrian um, options. So I'm following all this. Um, I think it's great. I appreciate it, and I appreciate you allowing me to talk a little bit tonight. And I'm sorry I have to go, but um, I expect to see the survey. Yes, sir. And thank you, sir, for joining us tonight. We appreciate it so very much. Thank you. Good night, all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. David. Uh, I see next on the list we have Katie Slade and then just to let everyone else know uh, we had two folks that were having trouble with uh, the hand raising feature so after Katie it will be uh, Paige and then Amon and then we'll uh, follow up with our last hand raise here with Danica but uh, Katie Slade if you go ahead and unmute and make your comments. Okay hopefully you can hear me okay. Yes, uh, my name is Katie Slade. I am on the Uptown Dallas board. Uh, Jim, I'm also a fourth generation member of the Church of Incarnation and frequently there with my young children parking on McKinney Avenue and trying to navigate with my kids to get across the three lanes of traffic with the cars going quite fast, uh, usually over the posted speed limits. And I'm very, very eager to make that a safe place to park because I'm a frequent parker there. And I also would really love to be able to walk my kids from the Church of Incarnation over to the West Village, which is just a few blocks away, but it's not a safe walk when you've got children and, and quick cars going past you. Um, I also have been doing business in Uptown for a number of years and built a number of projects in this area. And as I'm driving around Uptown, one of the things that I notice the most is how quickly, in spite of the high speeds that we that cars can go on some of these um, sections of the transportation corridor, there are moments of extreme congestion on those exact same roads, just blocks from where cars can get up to 50 miles per hour. You can be as slow as uh, you know, five miles per hour because you're stuck behind the trolley and cars parking on the street. And there's really no place to go because you're just trying to get a half a mile and you're trying to get there as quickly as possible, but there's really no way to do it besides sticking on McKinney or sticking on coal and waiting for that trolley to unload and waiting for the car to you know, unload the other pieces that they've got. And so to be able to quickly go over and take a left turn and get over to coal if I'm heading north on McKinney or vice versa, sounds like such an incredible benefit. And I'm so excited for that to be able to move faster at the points of congestion. I'm also excited as a pedestrian because frequently I'm parking along this route. And like I said, I would love to be able to have slower traffic, but I don't think that what this will do is slow the distance from a to B along the entire route. I think what it'll do is smooth it out a lot. So thank you very much for doing this. I'm very much in support of this. Thank, thank you for your Katie. comments. Thanks, Katie. Uh, up next, we have uh, Iman. If you'd go ahead and unmute and make your comments or ask questions. Hello, uh, my name is Iman Cole and I've lived and worked in the Uptown area for several years now. I'm also the chair of the Young Leadership Council for UDI, and I just wanted to say that I definitely support the McKinney Coal Two-Way Conversion. Um, I believe it would help increase the walkability of the neighborhood while giving people a calmer perception of traffic, which I think is greatly needed. Uh, I also walk and enjoy walking in the neighborhood, and I feel like I would feel safer uh, if wasn't in the uh, wasn't trying to get away from speeding cars uh, and then more with increased pedestrian friendly me friendly measures. Sorry, I can't talk. <laughs> so thank you for taking the time to hear my comment today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Iman. And next we'll go to Paige. If you would go ahead and unmute and make your comments or ask your questions. Sure. So I have some questions similar to the people who spoke earlier that live at Latour. I live at Mercer Square, so right where um, like the Oak Grove Clyde Allen intersection is. And I'm excited about the like 
push out pocket, whatever we want to call it. But it looks to me like that's getting rid of the right turn right onto Howell, which then like I now use, like I have to turn right on Howell, then turn left onto Worthington and then left onto McKinney to turn right on Clyde to park any time that I don't come up Allen or somewhere further south. And so my question is um, more about like if that interpretation is correct or if there's any way to kind of make that, I know that intersection will get better with like access to Allen, but I'm not sure if my personal problem or like access to that little section will get any better. Shamin, you're on a roll. You want to take that one too? <laughs> I think this question is a little bit more complex than I can answer right away. So if I can, can we take your uh, information? Because we need, uh, actually we're still working through how to reconfigure the intersection of the Allen and McKinney to make it better. And I understand what you're saying and your concern, uh, but be honest, we have not thought about that. And so if we can get your information, we can look into it and maybe have some suggestion for you, or maybe there's some other people doing the same way you're doing to make it better for everybody. Will that work? Yeah, I, yes, that'd be wonderful. Cause it, I love where I live, but it takes four turns to get home every time. And so um, anything we could do differently would be great. Yeah. So if we can have a more information from you and maybe your neighbor or somebody else doing the same thing you're doing and we can look at the route you're taking and make sure that we're not going to be impacted. So uh, Ryan, uh, make sure that we got the information, the contact information so we can get the additional information we need. Got it down. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, up next, we have uh, Danica. If you go ahead and unmute and make your comments or ask your questions. Hi. Okay, sorry. Um, Danica Mendrigal. We have been, my husband and I have been residents here at Sierra for about 10 years. And we've been doing this for about 15 years. Danica, you're a little hard to hear. <laughs> Danica, if you could, sorry, if you could move a little bit closer to the mic or uh, maybe try unmuting and remuting, but you're a little bit hard to hear. Ryan, why don't we come back to Danica in a moment? Gotcha. I'm sorry. Oh, oh wait, there we go. I've Perfect. got a Bluetooth issue. Ah, uh, yeah, there we are. Well, I, that was just super eloquent of me, and now it's all gone. I'm, I apologize. Can I, should I just repeat all of that? <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry for making y'all wait. No worries. Um, Danica Mendragel, my husband and I have worked, or I lived, excuse me, at Cole and Cambrick for over 17 years. Um, in full disclosure, I was also on the UDI board when this project was um, kind of in the process of originating, so I'm very familiar with it. But more importantly, as a resident, uh, we've got two young children. We spend a lot of time walking back and forth to Cole Park, um, walking down to West Village and sort of throughout the neighborhood, crossing Blackburn, crossing Lemon, and we are very familiar with how folks who probably don't live in our neighborhood drive throughout it. Um, so just wanted to take a moment to voice our support for the project and really looking forward to seeing these streets feel a bit more residential um, and, and a little less like pass-throughs. Gotcha, thank you for your comments, we appreciate it. Uh, up next we have uh, Keith Jones. Is Steve, last can you hand? hear me? Yeah, uh, yes sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, I've heard a lot of comments uh, and concerns about McKinney and Cole south of Fitzhugh. 
I live at 4412 McKinney, which is uh, north of Oliver and south of Armstrong, um, in the midst of the mad construction that's going on right now. Um, someday that construction will be over, um, and someday uh, we can walk again to uh, restaurants and shops near us. Um, I'm very concerned, one, about parking on McKinney, especially as we transition to two-way um, parking, especially at Ben Milam, which blocks traffic. Uh, that will take one complete lane out uh, going north in the afternoon. Um, but also the traffic, the, the ability to cross both McKinney and Cole at Armstrong. And I've heard nothing about um, any plans to make those safer intersections. Um, so I'd, I'd love to hear anybody's comment on, on safety parking in particular, which is not being enforced now. So I don't think it's going to be enforced later. And that's a big concern to all of us that live north of, of Fitzhugh on McKinney. So that's my comment. This is Christian out there. Par parking enforcement is definitely something we can work with um, Dallas Police Department and try and get folks out there to do some parking enforcement and work with our transportation department as well. Um, I'm going to ask Shameen if she'll address the rest of your comments. Um, Keith, and uh, I'm not sure if you missed the previous conversation. So. Uh, north of the feature, that is correct. A majority of the work is going to be uh, focusing on the sign and marking. However, uh, there are some uh, development going on near the Armstrong. So with that development, we are working with the developer. So we are going to add the new traffic signal at the M Armstrong and call as well as Armstrong at the McKinney. And meanwhile, we are going to uh, kind of reconfigure the intersection a little bit to make sure that we address the pedestrian safety or crossing at the both intersection. As for the parking, um, the parking, I would say the habit has to change a little because previously on the McKinney, you have a three northbound lane. On the coal, you have a three southbound lane. With the new proposed improvement, we are going to have a two northbound, one southbound on the McKinney and two southbound, one northbound on the coal. That is correct. There will be no parking feasible on the one uh, solely lane, either going north, basically on the coal or the south on the McKinney. However, on the outside lane, for those two lanes, such as like the McKinney, and the people are still be able to allow to park on the outside lane during the off peak hour. It's just like it's your parking behavior is going to change. You're not going to be able to park on the both side of the street, but you're still going to be able to allow to park on those two lane section, the outside lane. So um, it will have some elimination of the parking, but in general, we believe that that will be creating an environment safer for the pedestrian for the walking and also slow the traffic down. So I hope that will address your concern. Um, may, may, may I follow up on that just a bit? Yes, please. Um, so, uh, and I'm sorry. Um, can you elaborate on on the changes on the crossing at uh, Armstrong and McKinney Armstrong and Cole and you're, you're exactly right. The parking is a problem, but if you're going to allow parking in front of Ben Milam northbound, you're essentially going to have at four o'clock in the afternoon, like there is now, one lane going north uh, on McKinney, north of Fitzhugh. You're absolutely right. During the peak hour, there's a nothing. It's going to have a lot of a traffic going one direction. So it's going to have some sort of a congestion during the peak hour. You know, regardless, it's going to be the two way or one way. That's, that's something we cannot avoid, but we can address, you know, maybe improve the pedestrian crossing at those two intersections. For example, like uh, Armstrong and McKinney, and we have a Trader Joe, right? So we have already have a recess parking along the Trader Joe, and we have a parking and stripe of some area on the other side uh, across from the Trader Joe. 
we can make some improvement. We don't know what that is, and we are working into the detail with the developer as well as, as our traffic operation division. And we are going to put a new signal in there. So with the new signal, we are going to every of the new signal, we're going to have a pedestrian countdown timer as well as with the crosswalk. So that's something we're looking to it, not just as Armstrong uh, McKinney, Armstrong at the call, we're going to do that same at the call as well. The knock street, basically the knock street, we are replacing the older new signal uh, with the pedestrian crossing. So I can, I don't have any of the detail to show you right now, but we can follow up, you know, when we go into the detail in more detail and we can keep you updated, you know, what kind of uh, uh, the proposed improvement alignment will be. We can keep you posted on those. All of us that live north of Fitz, you would appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. All right, before we move on to our next uh, hand raise, I did want to let everyone know who uh, may not have seen in the chat. Uh, if you want, if you're looking for that uh, slide of the presentation that has both the QR codes to the English and Spanish survey, as well as the links, uh, that has been posted there. So if you click on that, it should either, you have an option to pop it up in your browser or download the file so that you just have that on hand. Uh, so moving on, our next hand raise I see is uh, Bert. If you'd go ahead and unmute and make your comments or ask questions. All right, I'm I'm unmuted. Um, uh, we can hear you, sir. You can hear me. Good. I'm terribly concerned about the question that my I live in the Latour. I've been a resident here for 22 years. Um, one of my neighbors brought up earlier the potential congestion on Oak Grove, um, which is our exit from our garage. Oak Grove, since from McKinney all the way up to Lemon and beyond, uh, in the last four or five years, has spawned apartment houses, resident, uh, multi-family residences of two to three to 400 families, uh, I think four or five such parties. So Oak Grove has become congested on its own without the potential of spillover from just what the previous presentation or the previous conversation was about in rush hour, uh, that people would take Oak Grove as a shortcut on the lemon and eventually onto Central Expressway. Um, and I wonder, and it's not just Oak Grove, but it's spillover into the side roads up outside of Cole and McKinney. But in, in our case, Oak Grove is already over trafficked. And particularly when trucks, delivery trucks or, or moving vans are parked to deliver their goods or deliver households. Uh, I wonder what what arrangements have been thought about for these overloads on the side road. And I'll listen to the response. Um, sir, this is Chris Turner Notewear with the Public Works Department. Yeah. Council Council Member Blewett was on the line a little bit earlier when this got brought up. And he asked that specific neighbor, and I know Ryan has their names, to deal specifically with his office on those issues so that we can try and deal with them now as opposed to when the project gets built. So can we also add your name, Mr. Romberg, to that same correspondence list in this issue? Would, Would that you be pay? Yes, sure. Okay. Thank and you. I Absolutely, sir. And I did bring up on the display, hopefully everyone can see it, the slide with the QR codes for the survey and the website. So hopefully people can see that as we're talking here. And if you can't, please let me know. Okay. And uh, up next we have uh, Shelly Potter. Shelly, it seems you're, you're still muted there. Uh, 
my assistant muted me. Sorry. <laughs> I, uh, Mr. Jones just addressed what I had brought up. And so I wanted to offer, I don't know his McKinney neighbors, but I know my coal neighbors. And if we could uh, have a group that would get together and discuss some of these challenges with Armstrong and Trader Joe's and all the construction in our area, I'd be willing to uh, try to mobilize some people to have that conversation if that would be helpful. Thank you, Shelly. I appreciate that. And we'll definitely be in touch with you. And uh, we'll move on to our last hand name uh, or uh, uh, raised hand here, uh, Debbie Ryan. And then after that, uh, we will open it up to anyone who's called in for our conference call number that uh, we'll, we'll get your comments afterwards. So Debbie, if you would go ahead and unmute. You. Actually, I didn't realize I raised my hand, but I do have a comment, so I'll go ahead and make it. <laughs> um, I am on the executive committee of UDI, but I also work in the uh, 2000 McKinney Avenue building. And so I've been a longtime uh, worker in the uptown area. And uh, having the one way traffic as you get further north at McKinney definitely has an impact on the walkability of the neighborhood and I'm strongly encourage the city to continue this project because I think it's really important that we have this one great area of walkability like other great cities in America have and I really support this project and I hope the city will work with UDI and other stakeholders to get this over the finish line. Thank you. Thank you Debbie. Uh, and with that, we'll go ahead for our uh, numbers that are still on the line. Uh, I see 214-695-7450. Uh, if you want to go ahead and unmute yourself with star six and make any comments or questions. OK, oh, there we go. Oh dear, this is Leslie Brosey and I live at Latour. I have the same uh, issues that Bert Romberg has, who also lives at Latour, um, uh, just about the ingress and egress and the um, overload on Oak Grove. And I and I will be contacting our our representative, uh, Mr. Blewett. Thank you, Leslie. Uh, I see a 5445. Five. Uh, Christopher, if you wanted Hi. to go ahead and make your comments or ask questions. Sure, yeah. I'll, I echo the residents of Latour's concern with Oak Grove is that it is our only access to resident parking. And um, so I'll, I'll also follow up with Mr. Blewett. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And then we have... Uh, uh, five zero five one. Go ahead and make your comments or ask any questions. Okay. Um, and with that, if there are no other questions or comments, uh, Chris, uh, should we go ahead and close it out? Yeah, I, I will note, um, I hope that the slide with the survey and the QR codes is still on the screen. So you can still utilize that to get to the QR codes. It also has the website address for the project. I do want to make a note on the survey. Um, we had some early folks indicating that they were having issues with the survey. Please note that the question that asks you to rank the amenities that you want to see in the corridor, you do have to answer every one of those. And one of those is showing off a little off the page. So you may have to scroll over to find that last number nine on there. So just want to warn you of that. If you have any issues with the survey, that seemed to be something that um, people were having some issues with early on. But we thank all of you for coming tonight and spending an hour and a half of your evening with us. Um, this is a very, very exciting project for the city of Dallas, for, for UDI, for MATA, um, and for TxDOT and COGS. So we appreciate everyone being here with us tonight. We're excited to keep this project moving forward. 
and we thank all of you for your participation. And please, the best way you can participate at this point is give us your input through your survey, please. Um, we look for that and we need that information to continue to move forward and do the best things we can do for the community with this project, which is what we want to do. So thank you again so much, everybody. I hope you all stay safe and have wonderful holidays. And we will reconvene at some point in the future and rediscuss these options. Thank you all. Have a wonderful Thank evening. You. We Thanks are everyone. adjourned. Thank you all. Bye.